What's up, everybody? You guys are watching and you're listening to the Big E Smalls Podcast. This is Ray. I'm here with my co-host, Eli. What's up? Oh, and our special guest, Bella. Yeah. Bella, say what's up to everybody. No. All no? Right, cool. Not today? Cool. Um, How you how you feeling, man? I, I mean, it's yeah. Been, it's been a rough uh, two weeks. Unfortunately. Um, Unfortunately. Well, you know, we're hanging in. Um, Obviously, you guys are going to see the little note at the beginning of the episode, but it has been a few rough weeks, not only for Eli, but our other co-host, EJ. Yeah. Uh, EJ, if you're watching this, just know that we got you, man, your family. Yeah. It's, uh, we'll, uh, we got it from here, but take your time. Uh, our condolences. Uh, we're right. truly sorry, man. And my condolences to you as well. Yeah. I know these are your loss as well. It's yep. not just on him, but I appreciate you still showing up. Yeah. Um. And you know, doing what what we're doing. Yeah, what we like to do. One thousand percent. What we love to do. Yeah, love to do. Uh, EJ, we love you, man. Take all the time in the world that you need. Yep. Uh, we got it from here. And uh, nothing, nothing but love and wishes, man. You heard. Uh, everybody else that's watching this, make sure you guys comment below. Send all your condolences to both Eli and EJ. Yeah. Um, uh, going through these rough times right now, but. On top of that, make sure you guys like the video if you enjoy the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And make sure you hit that notification bell so you never miss another banger. Yeah. Speaking of bangers, <laughs> we are going to skip the raise trivia of the day for this episode yeah. because we're going to get into a Woj bomb. Uh -huh. And two of them because we just recently got another one. Yeah. But the first Woj bomb is that Damian Lillard was traded to the Milwaukee Bucks. Sheesh. Very, very huge Woj bomb. Yeah. Probably caught everybody off guard because we're literally all thinking he's Miami. going to Miami. <laughs> yeah, he's going to find a way to get it to Miami. Um, but no, no. I guess because Miami really couldn't get a package together for Portland to give up Dame like that, but Milwaukee could. They made it work. Which kind of doesn't make sense because Milwaukee kind of flipped that around, and we're going to get to that for a second. Yeah. Um, you can, uh, you can, you know, let me know what you think, all that fun um, stuff. I'm trying to figure out uh, the trade, the trade, you know, what were the... Well, I know everyone's talking about Milwaukee, 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 but I'm going to be honest. The Suns were very, very sneaky. Yes, yes. I, I do think the Suns very, won very this trade, sneaky. too. I think they won the trade, too. Um, I I like that they got Nurkic. Um, I know it's a very big if factor because um, he is very injury prone. But when he's out there, man, defensively, he's there and rebounding. So with Aiton being out, you don't have to worry about him getting touches, his emotions, Nurtures is a dog. He's going to play, and he's what you need. A rim protector, a guy that's going to get rebounds for you. And especially when you got three-headed dragon, like, hey, we just need you to defend and rebound. That's it. We got the rest. We can score. And they got Grayson Allen, who can spread the four and also play defense. So I like those two pickups for them. I'm excited to see them. I uh, hate to be... Cause I'm a Laker fan, so I'm seeing that, and I'm like, sheesh. But yeah, I think that was, I think that was a sneaky, sneaky uh, trade for them. Um, I'm 100 percent with you. I do think the Phoenix Suns won this trade. Yeah. Um, obviously, a lot of people are gonna say Milwaukee this, Milwaukee that, because they got Damian Lillard. He's met, you know, he's teaming up with, uh, uh, what's this guy's name? <laughs> Giannis. Giannis, sorry, Giannis and uh, the 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 the, the Middleton, but. Middleton, Milwaukee definitely is going to need you to be a little bit more healthy. Yeah. Uh, but he's teaming up with them, so a lot of people are going to be like, oh, blockbuster trade, Damian, blah, blah, this, that, and the third. But listen, man, Portland, I'm reading here, Portland uh, traded away Damian Lillard. Milwaukee, all they really got was team. Yeah. Right? Portland receives from Milwaukee, they receive Drew Holiday and 2029 unprotected first round draft pick. Right? I think it's pretty pretty good. Drew Holiday unprotected. Well, damn. Whoa. We got to get your, your nails cut. <laughs> um, And then they ended up getting DeAndre Ayan and somebody by the name of Tumani Kamara from the Suns. 
Now, we all pretty much knew that Aiton was going to be out, especially yeah. with the Suns uh, keeping Kevin, Dur- Kevin Durant, excuse me, I was going to say Garnett, and Bradley Beal. Yeah. That was cool. But then the Suns receive... Uh, I don't know how to pronounce your first name, Nurkic, so I'm just going to say Nurkic. Yeah, Sorry. I don't want to, you know, disrespect you. They received Nurkic. Yeah. Nurkic, two, three years ago, before his, I think it was ACL or Achilles, I forgot what injury was. I know it was one of them. Nurkic was him. Yeah. Nurkic was, he was dropping buckets. He was playing defense, the rebounds. Yeah. Nurkic was him. If he can get at least to 80% of that, that could work very well for the yeah. Suns. Okay? You get Grayson Allen. Gritty player. We all know. What's up, my Blue Devils? We all know how gritty yeah. he gets. Uh, it, un- unfortunately, it does infuriate a few people, but it works out when it comes to like playoff time and yeah. you need to get into the faces of some people. Pause. But on top of that, very efficient three-point shooter. Yep. Right? And I know you mentioned that. Then on top of that, they do get two other players, which one of them I think is a steal because it could work for that system for the Suns. And in college, he was him. Portland, he had instances, and that's Nazir Little. Oh, and they also get Keon Johnson as part of the trade package. So Nurkic, just with Nurkic, Grayson Allen, Nazir Little, I yeah. think the Suns just wrapped it up in yeah. this three three team trade. Keon Johnson is not bad as well, uh, as well but uh, you know, an extra body for them to to work around with. But yeah, no, I think you know, great for Milwaukee. Yeah, great for Milwaukee. You get literally if Steph wasn't in the league, this might be well. I mean, there, I know there's uh, Luca as well, but this yeah. might be the best shooting point guard out there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm not gonna say the best point guard because against Steph and Luca, you could still arguably say Kyrie if Kyrie just. Well, I'm not gonna say nothing about Kyrie. That's my boy, uh, big jersey. Just gotta stay on the stay on the court. Yeah, just stay on the court. That's all we're asking. Um, but kudos for Milwaukee. That's great. Honestly, Portland, I don't think it was bad either. They're uh they're definitely gonna turn the page and now get into the Scoot Henderson yeah. era. Um, but you you know, to per, uh little, little, to compliment them, you get Drew Holiday, John DeAndre Ayton, which I know we spoke multiple a times bit about him. Yeah. I'm a big believer of DeAndre. I just think the system that he was in, as well as the pieces around him, didn't really help him out. But we're gonna see now with, with Portland how he works out with that. Um and then obviously they get the draft pick into Monte Camara. The Suns though. Yeah, you add yeah. those four pieces, but obviously the three pivotal pieces to now Kevin Durant, uh, Devin Booker, and yeah, Bradley, Bradley Beal. Beal. Yeah. Have a day. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the Suns definitely won that. Um, Portland, I would say Portland won the trade at, at least in second place. But then Portland, yeah. for the next Woj bomb, Portland goes on and then trades Drew Holiday – to the Boston Celtics, uh, which is... Hey, Jack, I know you're happy, my guy. I'm trying to figure out here. I think it's because we literally just got this news yeah. two seconds ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't really find who did Paul... Uh, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. Boston gives up to Portland. So, I mean, Portland doesn't really lose out that greatly. No. But uh, the Celtics give up Robert Williams III, Mal- Malcolm, excuse me, Malcolm Brogdon, and a protected 2024 first-round pick that they got from the Golden State Warriors. Um, they also get a 2029 unprotected first-round pick, uh, but that's a little far out there. So I still think Portland, I mean, they got some decent pieces. I know off-camera you mentioned that Robin Williams, he's very injury-prone, but I think, I mean both. Right? Malcolm Brog- Brogdon in the last few years, it's been kind of tough for him to stay on the court. But two very pivotal defensive players when they're healthy. Brogdon, he was 12th man of the year a couple years back. He can drop 20 whenever he really wants to. Yeah. Um, but again, I think it's, now that I'm thinking about it, again, as long as they stay healthy, it's cool complimentary pieces Jesus. for Scoo Henderson and those boys over there. Uh, but Boston Celtics are getting Drew Holiday. Yeah. You're literally, you're literally, right? The whole hoopla, oh, why are you letting go of Smart? Why are you letting go? This is probably the best person yeah. you can replace uh, Marcus Smart with. Yep. Literally. Like, it might have been the only person, honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, what he does defensively and what he's starting to do offensively. Yeah. He, he had a career high last year, points per game. So he's going to he's gonna bring that, that tenacity on the defensive end. 
and guarding and guarding uh their best player, which is great for Jalen Brown. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he doesn't now have to play on both ends of the floor, but now he brings a little bit of on the offensive side where we're not just playing a two man game with Jalen Brown and JT. Yeah. So I like it. I like it. I'm excited for them. I think that's the best piece that they got because I really don't like Porzingis. Um, I, yeah, I, I don't like think he really either. fits for them. And we, we, if you guys haven't seen our first episode, I really went into <laughs> that whole trade. I, I don't yeah. think I like that trade either. Um, and it's tough because he's he's really a a four. Um, he's not a five. And I I know you gave up. Uh, <laughs> I know you gave up Williams. Um, but he was he he was hurting you got well hurting the Celtics yeah, yeah. in a sense of not being on the floor. And then when he was on the floor, he just didn't look a hundred percent. Right, and that's that's the point that's like scary, girl. But Be- Bella wants to be on camera over you, so like, figure that out. Me. So, I think that's the only issue. I'm I'm Porzingis. I don't I don't know what he's gonna do. I don't I don't know how he's gonna go ahead and help them. Um, and now defensively as an anchor, they have no one, and that's gonna be hard too because Al Horford, I know he's undersized but he plays with heart Shoot, i forgot about him yeah you know so he plays with hearts and i get it but it's not gonna happen when you got the Embiid's and and you got the joker when you because they're getting there they're yeah. getting to the eastern conference and just not finishing so well, not only that now especially after this trade you're going to go against milwaukee yeah right and uh, again no offense to Przingis, are you going to put Przingis on giannis <laughs> I don't know what you do. I don't know. I don't know. Because you meant I forgot about him. You mentioned Al. Al's probably going to have, uh, I think they still have Brooke Lopez, right? Al might have his hands tied with Brooke. Yeah. Not saying Brooke is not the New Jersey Nets Brooke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? But it's still Brooke Lopez. Yeah. So Al Horford is going to have to figure that out with Brooke. You're going to, you're going to. He's undersized with Brooke Lopez. You're going to put Chris Tapp, Chris Tapp on Giannis and yeah, good luck. Yeah. Good luck. Like. Especially when he, when Giannis is coming down down the court, yeah. like on fast breaks, is like good luck. You know, I yeah. feel like uh, Celtics are really good, like when it's half court setting, and they've shown glimpses of stopping Giannis. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, you mean defensively? Defensively, yeah. yeah. Like, offensively, they're all off, their half court offense is uh, yeah, a little uh, shaky. I mean, well, Drew probably helps that out now. Well, but. I think he does because when you have Marcus Smart, no offense to him, he. Mm. Defense comes first before the offense. Yeah. So I feel like when you have Drew, you're gonna ha- you're gonna see the ball flowing a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. Um, which I like, but then I I want to go back to the defensive side because it's like it's gonna come down to can you stop Giannis? Yeah, for sure. And when you have nobody down there, I think that's gonna create some issues. Especially Giannis has gotten better passing the ball out. His vision and the post has gotten better. So I like what he's gonna do. It's now can can they move? Because once you start moving the ball and Giannis starts getting that second eye, it's gonna be difficult. Because guess what? You have Dame out there. You know, all right. all it takes is one swing and then swing it back to Dame. You got that inside out game, which it's gonna hurt. Yeah, I mean, well, on this couch, uh, even if EJ was here, no disrespect to EJ. Sorry, you're definitely the def- defensive like anchor on this couch, but. The only way I can see them, maybe, and I'm not saying that this is solidifying Celtics and Milwaukee. We know what could happen in the playoffs. I mean, we we saw what Miami uh-huh. Heat did last year. Yeah. Uh, the Knicks, even though they didn't go too far, but the Knicks, you know, they managed to pass the first round. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So things could definitely happen. But let's just say Eastern Conference Finals, Boston Celtics, Milwaukee Bucks. Defensively, because you're right, I think with Al Horford and Chris Tapp, you, that's a big loss when you got like when healthy dudes like Robert Williams, right? Yeah. Um, I do think they're probably missing a four man, um, uh, because I know they saw I think it was ESPN or I forgot where I saw it on Instagram. Someone already put up like a, a projected uh starting lineup for them, and it was like Drew Holiday, Derek White, uh, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Chris Stapp. I don't like that. Right. No. The reason why is no offense to Derek White. I do like you coming off the bench. I think especially now that they have Drew Holiday. Yeah. You have Drew Holiday that could be your starting five floor general and Derek White, which I think is the second best 
to me. Yeah. I know people are going to say, oh, but Jason could do it too. Oh, Jalen could do it. No, 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 no. I know what you mean. A lot of their playoff woes is yeah. because they have to play that bring up the ball guy. And now that you have Drew to do it for the starting lineup and Derek White to do it for the second second um yeah. team, don't bring up the ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jason, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown. If it's a fast break, do what you do on the fast break, obviously. But if we're doing a half court offense, n- just set up your offense and let Drew Holiday slash Derek White deal with it. Okay, yeah, let him operate. Um, because the, they're really, in my opinion, this is Ray's opinion. They're really good at doing that. Drew, we've seen Drew be a good floor general with not only the Philadelphia Sixers, Seventy Sixers. He did it with uh, New Orleans. He obviously did it with Milwaukee. On, on top of that. Excuse me. I know the Celtics, they have uh, experience when it comes to the playoffs. We, we've had this conversation but before. Drew. But now you're bringing Drew. And I think Drew was there when Milwaukee won it all. Got so right. now you got a winner. Yeah. You got someone that's been playoff tested and is a winner. Yep. You know? On your starting lineup to compliment your boys. Yeah. Your, 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 bu- your big money when, it, you know, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. Um, but I think... They need to get a four. I don't know where they're going to get it or how they're going to get it. Pause. Um, Here's what I found. Yeah, I didn't ask you. Siri is Ooh, really wait, trying to... Yeah, yeah. Well, like, what's good with you? I you you can't be the star of the show. Um, But I said all that to go back to the whole defense thing. The only way I see this happening, right? If they get a four-man that's solid to play the four. Drew... Okay, again, this is Eastern Conference Finals, Milwaukee. Yeah, yeah. We're going to stay there. Drew, do what you need to do against Dame. I, we know it's Dame. Dame is yeah. going to figure it out and drop his 25 plus, 30 it's plus. going to make him work for it. Though. Correct. But you're Drew Holiday, you can stick on Dame. This is what I would do. Obviously, you could tell me what's wrong. I would put Jalen Brown on Giannis. Giannis, I, we, I get it. Full head of steam is kind of unstoppable. But if Jalen Brown gets beat, then the, the Jason Tatum, Chris Stapp, and whoever the four, then we just need you to just be the the brick wall after those two guys get beat. Right. That's the way I see it. It could be wrong, obviously. Right. I'm not really the defensive guru. I'm just seeing it that way because in the starting five, obviously, your best two defenders are are now Drew Holiday and Jalen Brown. Um, but, are we talking about like a fast break? Or are we talking like semi, semi-transition? Or are we talking about half courts? Cause this, this, so I think semi-transition and half court... I think my to me again to me my idea is works best. Full fast break, it's difficult because I mean we we know what Giannis does on fast yeah. break, so it's kind of, and then you add Dame Dame to that. I know that's going to be difficult. Yeah. I'm just saying, let's say I'm the coach, uh, Missoula. If I'm Missoula, Drew, you guard Dame, Jalen, you guard Giannis to the best of your abilities, and we'll try to back you guys up if you get beat. It's it's tough, and and I'll say this like transit like. Fast breaks and semi transitions, like it's gonna be all five. Yeah, yeah. it's not. No, well, it's, well, it's gonna be all four. Mm-hmm. And what's gonna happen is, uh, Drew's not. He's gonna have to trail and wait for for Dame. Mm-hmm. We all know Giannis has come down. He surveys the floor, kicks it back out to Dame. And if you got all five there, easy knockdown. So Drew has to stay home. He has to stay home on Dame. And Giannis has to go one on four. Yeah, yeah. Like you have to, they I've seen uh 76ers do it. I've seen a couple teams do it. They try to build a wall, have like a three man front to protect the rim. Now, the tricky part is is full I mean, half court setting, what do you do? Defensively, usually Boston Celtics are with Miami, not in scheme wise, but effort, being able to defend. Last year, I didn't really see it much. The year before is when I really saw Boston Celtics play defense. Right, and that was the year Marcus Smart was Defensive Player of the Year. Yeah, but you can ask KD that. <laughs> but my thing is, Jalen Brown is like, is he playing um like post? Because like I think that is just. You're giving up two. And if you're going to give up two, you're you're going to lose. And or he's going to be in foul trouble. Yeah. Like, it's hard because I feel like Jalen Brown is going to have to do a lot more work before he gets the ball. Meaning, if he gets the ball in the post, it better be 
towards the free throw line area. Right. Like because a, if it's yeah, anywhere post, closer, yeah. to the it's basket. pointless to have yeah, yeah. Jalen Brown guarding him. No, true. I'm with you. You have to make him try to shoot that mid range, and it, and then make him go. You don't want him to go baseline because yeah, yeah. that's easy. You want him get him to the middle, and hopefully someone can help you out, like a Porzingis or an Al or get that mm-hmm. help. That's my only suggestion to that because if he's out there, I'll let him shoot that 15 footer every time until he hits it consistently. Yeah, because we haven't seen it. And if he's out there in the three, I'd give him that space. And let him shoot it. We have we have to see if he could shoot. You know, true. So let him shoot. At and, least he's willing. And yeah, and he's got to be willing to do his do the dirty work for. I e Ben Simmons. <laughs> <laughs> and push him off the block because if if he gets anywhere five feet closer to the rim, yeah. it doesn't matter if it's Jalen Brown. It doesn't uh, matter if it's Al Horford. He's, well. I'm I'm with you one hundred percent. You know I feel that like was going to be a collective effort. That was just again, if Ray was Missoula. Now at that point, like you were saying, there's going to have to be a lot of a lot of communication, a involved. lot of talk. But if if let's say somehow Milwaukee or because uh, I still think no, I don't think it's Bud. I think but well, well regardless, whatever Milwaukee goes. Okay, you know what you got? You guys got Jalen Brown on him. Then we're going to attack the post. Then I would just you know let's say in a timeout tell my defense, listen, if you guys see that. He's going to try to attack the post, uh, communication, switch on it, then put Chris Stapp at the post. Everybody help D the fi- around him, you know? Question. Uh-huh. How about if you were to put Jalen Brown on Dame? And, and Drew. And see what Drew could do with Giannis. So, I thought about that. Very well. Yes, because as teammates, probably during practices, Drew definitely knows uh, Giannis' tendencies, right? Or, and a lot of his weaknesses that he works on. The thing about Drew, the reason why I like that too, unlike Jalen, I'm not saying Jalen can't do it, but Drew is Six. just slightly smaller he is slightly. and a little bit more naggy. Yeah. If he's going to post, Drew's going to find a way to get around, maybe poke the ball. Out, you know what I'm saying? So I like that. I yeah. I, I see what you're going. I like that. Um, I'm only saying it's because, I mean, I obviously follow LeBron and I like – they put Drew Holiday on LeBron James. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, obviously, he's LeBron James. He he does score. But there's a reason why Drew Holiday. Like, yeah, for sure. We're not going to sit sure. here and say Drew Holiday. I think. he Not saying he doesn't. Like, he's out here getting killed by LeBron. Yeah. He does his part. Mm-hmm. LeBron, on all phases, scores. Giannis is just one way. I yeah, feel no, like Drew much. can have his way defensively in certain areas of the court where he can he can make him work. Um and like I said, he sits. He sits and I think Giannis his ball handling yeah has gotten better, but it's very like open, loose, where I think Drew he he's good with his hands. He sits. I think he can he can really disrupt his his timing and getting to the room. Yeah. So that would be my little but we'll see. They're they're in the they're in that conference. They're gonna play each other more than more than uh four times for sure. So we're yeah we're gonna see this matchup multiple times a year before obviously the playoffs. Yeah. Um, I do have one question for Giannis. Because of this, obviously it puts you guys you know in the top teams to win the championship. Are you gonna say world championship or NBA championship? Yo. I just want to know. Uh, no. What did he say? Did he was like ah? Uh, uh, yeah, I agree with I, whatever his yeah, name is. We gonna see. Yeah, yeah. Better play in the friggin'. For his team, for yeah. his freaking country. Tato. Yeah, freaking sucio. We're, we'll leave it at that, right? But, it's crazy. But it's definitely it's definitely going to be a fight between those two teams in the Eastern Conference. Um, and speaking of fight, last night, Ooh. Canelo Alvarez fought against one of the Charlo twins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, J- 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 Damn, I forgot the name. Sorry. Jermall. But one of the Charlo twins. Canelo Alvarez ends up winning by unanimous decisions. Yeah. This the unanimous decision, excuse me. Um going to the distance all 12 rounds. All 12. And I just want to see what you think and you know uh um he he looked great. I don't know if you noticed he didn't he didn't sit. No, no. On any of the But uh, that's that's Canelo. I don't I'm, know if you watch Canelo yo, religiously, but he don't he don't sit. Yo, I'm like And I think that's a I think that's a psychological thing, and I like that from him. But whatever. I I so I think yes, and I think I, 
I like it. So I was yeah, watching yeah. it, and I'm like, I, I'm, I'm thinking about why, what's, what's the reason behind it in a sense of like, mental, because obviously it's mental. And yeah. Two, I think, like, I don't know, like I've, I've, we played basketball, like I've, I've sat on the bench. And you get cold. And you get cold. Yeah, 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 for sure. I'm like, I feel like that has to play a role in that. So it, it especially like, those little benches that they give them. It's a small ass bench. Like imagine sitting on a bench and your knees are like this. <laughs> Now you got to get up yeah, and yeah, go yeah. three minutes with this dude. Yeah. yeah no, no, I, I feel so, you. That's that's what came to my mind because I remember, like, coming off the bench and, like, getting some minutes. And I'm like, I'm coming out of here cold. Yeah. Like, I've seen, like, players in the NBA, like, they'll get on the bike and they'll just pedal. Oh, yeah, true, true, true. Just to stay warm because there's no way I'm going to not play for the first five, get in, mm-hmm. come out. And then go back in. Yeah, yeah. I just built a whole sweat. Yeah, yeah. You're bugging out. So, I mean, obviously, it's a different, similar, but different, because you're going, like, five minutes not doing it at all. Yeah. But I'm like, this man is not freaking sitting. And then not only was he not sitting, forget that. Dude, he was aggressive the first round, second round. They're talking about, oh, yeah, Canelo takes about two, three rounds to get. He was like, nah, we're not doing that today. We are going to kill <laughs> get into that. now. And yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. I was liking it. I loved it. I loved it. Yeah. So, and I thought I thought he he was going to uh, knock him out one more time. That that overhand right hand is vicious. Yeah. Is vicious. Well, the thing with... So, the reason why I like Canelo, right? Canelo knows that when it comes to boxing and just fighting in general... Like we can we can translate this to street fights. We can translate this to MMA. You know, a lot of it is mental slash psychological. Yeah. Right. So with him, you know, standing up between rounds, he's he's always been doing that because uh, to him it's it shows to his opponent like, damn, this guy's not gonna sit down. Like he's just gonna stand yeah, up the whole time, and I gotta fight this guy. That's insane. Right. And then I'm with you. It definitely has to play the whole. Wow, sit down, get up, fight three rounds with the dude. Because we know, listen, whoa, okay, 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 wait, wait. I'm going to assume that we know. I'm not going to assume that all the viewers know. Fighting someone for three rounds is like running a 50-mile marathon. It's It's not for the week. And then you pair that to sitting down every round for, what is it, 30 seconds? Come on, bro. You know? It's a psychological thing. Then you you know you mentioned that he wasn't backing down. Listen, I think he knew that Charlo, if he got into Charlo's head a little bit, and Charlo kind of mentioned that he's like, oh, it wasn't me out in the ring. It's because Canelo got in your head, bro. He started yeah. swimming in your brain, yeah. and and there was that one round. Uh, for, I think it was the seventh round, right? Yo, Charlo was backing up, and Melo, uh, Melo, Canelo was like, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, no. We hear then you. he went back in, and no, 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 no. I'm going to meet you there. Like, yeah, you're not yeah. going anywhere. You either face me yeah. or die, Yeah. basically, right? That left hook. He was sending him up with that left hook every time um, he was trying to run away. And that was the other thing. So, now the reason, what I like about Canelo is this. Canelo, I think, I, I think he's right, but at the same time, there's a different form of Canelo that was probably more prime than this Canelo. But this this Canelo right now, yeah. unless it's like Benavidez, I don't. I don't know who could really. He looks sharp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. He looks sharp. Um. His last fight against Bevel, Canelo did the whole. I'm gonna take two, three rounds, kind of read you out, yeah. and. You know, to uh, Bevel's credit, Bevel ended up winning the fight because it was too late for Canelo to turn it back on. Yeah. Bevel figured out the fight, figured out Canelo, and then just went to attack. Right. Canelo definitely learned that. Learned from that and said, no, we're not doing that. Round one, second number one, I'm in your ass, yeah, boy. Yeah, yeah, no, he was there. So he was there. And what and what I liked seeing from Canelo, it was a lot of the sizing up. You know, it was like the little jabs just to see what's your reaction, what muscles is switching. Oh, I see this happening. You're going to, boom, now that right hook coming. Yeah. And and obviously, I think it was the eighth round when he knocked, or it was the seventh round when he knocked him down. You know, he kind of dipped a little right hook to the temple. It is, you know, yeah, it knocked him down. Cheap. And and another thing that's always been in Canelo's bag, Canelo's bag is going, uh, Canelo's bag. Canelo's going to try, always, always, always hit your body. 
if he could break your body down while yeah. psychologically getting into your mind, how are you winning this fight? Yeah. Unless you're Bevo. But that, again, not taking the credit from Bevo, it was Canelo's issue with starting the fight late, you know, personally. Uh, yeah, no, no, no. He was digging in Charlo's ass. He was yeah, digging yeah. in his ass. Pause. Give him a chance. And, and Charlo... I, you know, he recognized that he wasn't himself, but Charlo needed to go out there. The only thing I don't like from you, Charlo, is, you know, you say that it wasn't you. I mean, that point might be, might defend you in this point that I'm about to make. You said that it wasn't you. But you go out there, you know, for the sake of the argument, you laid an egg, and then you want to go and challenge Bud? Yeah. What? Not after for that, what, bro? You know, like why? Like I, you know, uh, now, yeah, you got, you got, you go train, get yourself ready, because Bud's Bud. <laughs> if you, if you thought it's gonna be a lesser fight with Bud, like what you, what you just went with Can- against Canelo, you're gonna go against Bud. Yeah. Bud is is also another tactical fighter. He's gonna break you down. He's gonna, he's gonna be on the offense. He's not. He's gonna cut the ring. Yeah. He's going to cut the ring. You're going to fight in this corner because he's not going to allow you to move out of that. Yeah, he was trying to do a lot of zigzag, trying to get away. And yeah. I think that's what hurt him because, like, Canelo was like, all right, try to slip. <laughs> do Here's it. his left hook. Canelo was playing basketball Dude. defensive slides yeah. out there. He's like, yo, I'm going to beat you to the spot, brother. You're yeah. not leaving this area. It was insane. It was but good. it was a great fight. Um, It was a great form from Canelo, and that makes me so happy. I really didn't like what I saw against Bivol. Um, even though I th- uh, I think the fight before v- uh, Bevel, it still wasn't up to par. But I think when he fought Caleb Plant, I think it was Caleb Plant. Canelo looked pretty good, but against Bevel, that was you just started a little too late, Canelo, and that be- that bite that bit you in the ass. But I love seeing this type of Canelo. And it- oh, 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 back to the psychological mental thing. The press after and he's saying no one's beating this Canelo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the world the world is on check, and I'm gonna be honest. I don't know if Canelo really wants to fight him or like that because, like I said, he is him. But I need to see that Canelo and Benavides. Yeah. Um, damn, I can't really think at the top of my head. I don't know if they're in the same weight class. I don't think they are. They might have to figure all that out. But I want to see Canelo for two top two Mexicans like that. I need you to guys go at it. Yeah. I need you. To, and Benavides is him. He is him. Benavides is another person people do not want to see in a ring. Yeah. But it's a great fight. Um, I don't think in the month of October, there's a, they might be, but I don't really remember. But it's on to November with I, it's Shakur. I think Shakur is fighting. Big jersey. You heard? Yeah. Big jersey. Um, so Shakur is fighting in November, so I can't wait for that. But we are going to now. We're going to move on. We're going to move on into football. Yeah. Bella, what happened? What's going on? Okay, Bella. Bella just turned up because we're about to get into <laughs> college football, and obviously, Word. college football is not college football unless we talk about the Colorado Buffaloes, right? Is that is that their thing? I don't even remember yeah, their. Buffaloes. Yeah, it's Buffaloes. Look at me. I'm talking about Colorado for four weeks straight, and I don't even know their mascot. Wow. That's but the Colorado crazy. Buffaloes now, unfortunately for us, we had no episodes uh, come out or be published last week. Um, Eli and EJ did have to go through a loss, uh, th- their first loss, unfortunately. Uh, my, again, my condolences. And <laughs> even though we shot a video, we had some technical difficulties. But we are going to talk about both games because of that. Colorado versus Oregon and Colorado versus USC. Do you want the ball? Do you oh, want to start? Man. I could start. Uh, but you could start. Yeah. You know why? You'll start. <laughs> Because when I get into it, I'm going to lead into something else. So I'll, I'll have you start your, your thoughts about these two games. Uh, it was, I'm going to be honest. So there was – I didn't know there there was a lot pregame with Colorado. And and my boy, or, the Oregon coach, man, he he was really sticking it to them. But I'm going to just stick to the, to the football aspect first, just the playing, because Colorado looked flat. Yeah, yeah. They looked flat. Um they couldn't defend my boy Sanders at all. He was they were getting to him early and quick. And defensively, they they didn't have anything. I'm so, my boy Bo was was on one. He <laughs> was on one. He looked sharp. And it's that experience, man. Yeah. And and the coach said it. He's like, hey, we're not done. Game's not over. We got more to give. 
and he, you know, they stepped on the gas. You know, they they showed him what college football is about. Yeah, Oregon is Oregon to a certain extent. Yeah, I'm, and I, and I'm gonna get into it because I think he was kind of gross, but he was gross. But I feel like um, Sanders said it best. He's like, hey, we're we're playing football. You know, they're not they're they're attacking me. They're not attacking the team. Correct, correct, which, correct, correct, correct. At that point, like, what are we doing here? He's yeah. like, I'm not playing. I'm not the one playing. Yeah, it's done. It's done. Um, I, I've been done. I've been retired. You know what I mean? Let's play football. At at this moment, they are two and two. Three and two. Three, three and two. two. Three and two. They started three and zero. Oh. They are. They've done. Yeah, already. Like you already won two more games than last year. My point. Like exactly. it's already a success story. The fact that you, there's a conversation about beating Oregon. The fact that. There's a conversation of you going against, you know, you UCS like that. That is just in itself great, you know, to put yourself in that conversation. And like, I get it, Oregon demolished them. Yeah. But to then come at, you know, character and enough. Right. Take the win. Keep it moving. Move Let, on. Let's see what you do. Like you always do right. when when it when it really matters. This game is not gonna matter. And that know? and that's what I was gonna get into at my point. I okay, I get it. Maybe the rest of the country is fed up with the whole Colorado phenomenon, but you guys gotta understand, right? They get Coach Prime. Yeah. Which Coach Prime has been this since Jackson State. The issue is, and I'm not gonna get into it because obviously there's gonna be Different levels of issues with that is he played at an HBCU yeah. uh, school. So th- this form of Coach Prime, even though it was the same form, we're not going to feel the magnitude of it because, no offense, I do not, I'm do not. i not disrespecting yeah. conferences, schools, or nothing. It was at an HBCU. Yeah. It's not at a power, you know, at the, at the uh, what is it, a power five conference. That's, yeah. I think that's what they call it, right? But whatever. The whole, oh, they fight for clicks, we fight for wins, this, that, and the third. Oregon, please tell me the last time you guys won a national championship. Yeah. And the last two times you were in the national championship, you got, you got exposed. Yeah. Right? So I get it. And, and I don't think this guy coached in those last two championship, uh, national championships. So I get it, this, that, and the third. But you guys had Mariota on one of them. <laughs> what was the I forgot the other quarterback. So in, in re, and, and in those two years, you guys are doing what – so. You're just rewriting history. You have Bo Nix. Great, great quarterback at Auburn. Transfers to Oregon. St- you know, experience. Great quarterback, right? You guys are blowing everybody by 60 points. You guys won uh, by 40 against uh, Colorado. I think it was 45 to 7, right? Cool, 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 cool. You guys can run through everybody. What are you going to do when it matters? Yeah. I don't care about all oh, they, cl- they, f- they, they fight for clicks. What are you going to fight for at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the season? Cause it ain't gonna and, be winning. <laughs> so you come down. on, man. Like, it ain't gonna be winning. like let's really get into it. Like, right? This, this, run, this win really helps you. Like, come on now. Yeah. Like you, you want to get that hype for them, and just and I guess that's what Prime was saying is like, yo, you're fighting me. You're not even fighting my team. Nope. Then on top of that, on top of that, right? You're getting so hot for a team that literally sixty players just joined four weeks ago. And they're missing their number one I, dual threat. I'm going to call it that. Right? Yeah. What? Mm-hmm. Pipe down, brother. Pipe down. You got, And <laughs> let, let me break it to you. You guys haven't fought anybody in the SEC. Yeah. So until you win against Georgia, against Alabama, against uh, Texas, against Tennessee, unless – well, Texas is not in the in – the, or are they? I don't remember because I feel like Texas just moved. But whatever. Unless you win any of the, against them – I don't want to hear it. Uh, I don't want to hear it. So, yeah, you know, get rowdy against Colorado. Because you. the only reason you got rowdy is because you know you're going to win. Yeah. You're not going to do that when Georgia's on the other side. You're not going to do that if Alabama's on the other side, if Penn State is on the other side. You're not going to do that. Yeah, let me see that same Bart. Let me see the same Bart. That same energy. I need that same energy when you face them. Yeah, you're not. You're not. You're not. I don't want to hear it. I mean, I like, I like the fire, I guess, to pump up the boys. Yeah, yeah. I get that. Yeah. But you sound the gross, brother. You yeah. sound the gross. And you're not going to, and just like Eli just said, you're not going to have the same bark when it's, when it's college playoff time and yeah. across across the field is Georgia. Yeah. So, um, sorry, I kind of hijacked your point. But that the thing <laughs> is, you, you were mentioning it, and I, yeah. you know, I feel like it was going to get stale to, once I get to my part. But, no, no, no. But then, then next, next week, which was yesterday, they yeah. faced USC. 
And again, it I I don't know if it's their their the prep is they're not ready, but they came out flat once again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Sanders threw a, a a quick interception right there, and I I don't I want to give credit to Colorado in that second half, but I was watching it. And for for a split second, it looked for like a, a couple drives, it looked like they they uh they let off the gas. Yeah. And then when they noticed it was like they like, Colorado got in rhythm. They're like, oh, they snap. tried to step it up, and right. it, it it was almost it was almost too late. Mm-hmm. Like to lose by to win by seven when you were up by three touchdowns, yeah. three tutties, is is scary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I I want to give credit to. Colorado and coming back, making it, making it a game, but I still want to say they let off the gas. USC let off the gas a little bit, which then gave them the opportunity to really give them a, a chance to win. Right. Um, I think I'm with you. Like, obviously you have the slow start against Oregon, but yeah, whatever. I'm done with that already. Uh, and then now you have the slow start against USC. Yeah, missing a field goal early. Oh, like, that's I yeah, truly, truly. I know it's just three because at the time they were down seven seven zero, seven so zero. it would have made seven three. I know it's just three points, but no, 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 no. I think watching football in both levels, pro and college, even the even if you're down, those three points help. Yeah. Because obviously they're gonna help at the end of the game when it comes to the total and the final, but it also help in uh, composure. When you miss a field goal, you you could tell the whole team's like, damn. Yeah, it's a m- momentum killer. It's like, you know? wow, we, you know, you guys march down the the field. Yeah. Yeah, you get stopped and everything, but cool. I, we're gonna we're gonna settle for the three points. You miss. Yeah. Now you're still at zero. And you know who you're going against. Like you know, every every score counts. Yeah, it, for sure. You know going against because them. once again. <laughs> Caleb is literally playing Madden or NCAA football with with the well with so far the opponents that he's faced. Yeah. Again, I'm also gonna say the same thing to USC. You guys haven't faced anybody else outside your con- uh, conference. I need I need to see you guys. You guys, I, you guys probably won't even win against LSU yeah. or like Mississippi and State. Caleb played a great game, but didn't he get interception? Um, I think he did throw one, if I remember correctly. I think he did throw one, and, I, and listen, there. Go against – and the ACC conference, I don't see you guys beating Florida State. Duke yeah. is playing great, even though yeah. I'm going to get into that. No, Notre Dame. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, stay over there. That, that game <laughs> – Stay that, over there. That Notre Dame game was – with Duke was insane. No, that was that another nice one. That drive. That was another one, and we're going to get into it. Let me just finish by saying, you know, Kate, like I said, Caleb was playing video games with you guys, but credit to Eli for mentioning it. You guys can't just underestimate any team. I'm not even going to say Colorado. I'm just going to say yeah. any team. Because for you guys to be up 30 or 40, whatever, yeah, three, and then... Easy three tutties. And then only win by seven, I yeah. think it was? If I'm if I'm correct? Yeah, no, it was seven. Yeah. I don't know. You can't... Because what that tells me is this. And obviously, there's a lot of ifs. There's a lot of ifs. But let's say Colorado doesn't start slow. You lose yeah. this game. Yeah, you definitely lose. You this lose game. this game, and and I said this two weeks ago. Do not allow, and they didn't. So, do not allow Colorado to win any of these games. Yeah, Colorado wins these games. I don't care who you yeah. are. Just ch- just chop it up. This season is Colorado's. Yeah. Even if they don't win the national championship, no one's gonna care. No. Yeah. No one's gonna care. If Colorado won one of these games, let's say they get to a bowl game, maybe lose or win the bowl game, I don't care if Alabama wins the national championship. Yeah. No one's going to – we're going to be like, oh, kudos, Alabama, this and that, there. But the real winner is Colorado. Because now, now, this is where I think it gets scary and why I think a lot of these teams are mad and talking shit the way Oregon's coach was barking. The problem is you see how, how gritty Colorado is and how dangerous they can be. Coach Prime two weeks ago mentioned I'm seven to eight dogs away from being yeah. them. Uh-huh. It's Coach Prime, you know. All the hype is on Colorado. When it comes to recruiting, who you think is gonna be winning all these players? Yeah. You know, I'm I'm roll tide Alabama to the de- and they're you know Georgia Alabama the Florida states the Florida the Tennessees the Texas they're gonna do them, but then everybody on the West Coast when they see Colorado Oregon USC Washington. Mm-hmm. What do you think is going to happen? Uh-huh. 
So I think that's why you guys are feeling some type of way that they're getting all the hype because you know in the upcoming years you it's gonna get, it's gonna get scary for the Pac-12. And that's what I said. I said, hey, Prime, give him give him five ten years. He's gonna solidify himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, in it's gonna. League. I and you know what? In that time frame, I wouldn't be surprised if he wins one. I would not. If he wins one national championship, I wouldn't be surprised. I would not. And let me tell you now, if you guys are mad now, Ooh. if he wins one, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, nah, that's sports, baby. He yeah. is sports if he does that. For sure. But on to, you know, a, another tough game, uh, Duke or Notre Dame, excuse me. Notre Dame versus Duke because I think it was at Duke. V- Yo, I don't know if you watched this game. I watched probably three quarters worth because I had we had the double header. Yeah. So we had to go play our games. Um, awesome game. Yeah. Awesome game. Back and forth, great defense. I know there was a lot of – it was great defense by Duke. Notre Dame, they played good defense and good offense as well. But that Duke defense, man, they made sure. I'm going to tell you right now, if Duke didn't play the defense that they played, Duke would have been blown out. Yeah. But the thing is, they played such great defense to keep them in the game so the offense can do something. Yeah. Because for, if I remember correctly, if I was watching it second, third quarter, or maybe even first, second, the Duke offense was, was a little stagnant. Yeah. But their they defense is what late. kept them in. I think it was 10-0 for like two quarters straight. The first and, half. Yeah, right. Then finally, you know, they started scoring here and there. And I think they were they, they were up. And so, you know, Notre Dame marched down at the end of the game to win the game. But yeah. Well, I blame this on the running back. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. He's got to go down. He's got to go down. For sure. There's no way you you score that Teddy there. You just go down. <sighs> And then ice the game. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. You know, but I mean, I'm with you 100. percent But it is college game. You know, college kids. They, I don't. I don't know. He was. I. I. You get know, it. Pro, pros kind of do that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. You score. That's not like a college mentality. Yeah. But what I like about this, you know, and and I know I I just talked mad shit. I'm not gonna disrespect the Pac-12. You guys do have some great teams. But what I like what's going on between the Pac-12, the Big Ten, you know, because Michigan, yeah. Ohio State, mm-hmm. you know, uh, Rutgers just had a huge win. No, I mean, uh, the team they played was booty cheeks, but <laughs> they won by like 50. Damn. I don't hear that. You don't hear that a lot from Rutgers against yeah. whatever. And Rutgers played against the week before. I think they played against Michigan. I forgot who they played against, but they played decently, right? Listen. It's again, like I said, it's roll tide, but I love that the other conferences are really are catching stepping up. Stepping it up, yeah. You know, ACC, you got Duke, you got Notre Dame, Florida State is doing their thing. With the Big Ten, you got Michigan, you got Ohio State, you got multiple teams there. Obviously, the Colorados, the Oregons, and USC in the West. Yeah. We're not really hearing a lot from Georgia, two time world ch- uh, national champions. Alabama, you know, uh, oh, Texas, they're making noise. You know what I'm saying? Um, again, even though I, I don't really remember, I think Texas is still in the Big Ten, but I could be wrong, whatever, um, or the Big 12. Uh, everybody's just taking the, the noise out of the SEC, you yeah. know? Georgia, I put up there that they have an impressive win. The win, they had to fight that for that yeah, win, it but it's still impressive because it shows us that, you know, in adversity, they could, adversity, they could still pull out. Pause. Wow. <laughs> but uh, Tennessee, Alabama, Florida, Georgia. I like we're what not, we're seeing. I like what we're seeing. We're not really hearing. You guys are still winning. You guys are doing what yeah. you're supposed to be doing, you know? But we're not hearing too much now. You can give credit to Colorado. They've been freaking just dominating the, the college yeah. football year so far just in the news. But every other conference is doing their thing, man. So it's a, it's a, it's a very exciting and fun college football year. Can't wait for playoff time. I'm excited. Even though, even though it's four teams and I'm so glad that they moved it, I think six for next year or eight. I think it's six. I don't think it's eight. But next year, now we jump to six teams in the playoffs. Yeah. So I can't wait for that. You know, give give a few teams, I guess, a little bit more uh, opportunity. Yeah, um, man. Four is tough, man. It is tough. is tough. It's not even a top five. It's a top four. Yeah, it's gross. Like, imagine being the fifth-ranked team and you're not even in the playoffs. You're not even, yeah, you're not even in there. I like six. Six is a good number. Six is pretty cool. Yeah. You have to keep it even, so obviously six. Unless you're going to do, like, a wild card thing. And nah. we're not doing that in college football. Nah. We're not doing that in football, period. Yeah. You know, but transitioning to the pros, you know, a lot of good games out there. 
lot of bad games. But I do want to touch base on two certain teams slash two certain players that are just getting a lot of, uh, I don't even know if you want to call it notoriety. But the Chicago Bears with Justin Fields and the New New Jersey, New York Jets (laughs) with Zach Wilson. And I'm here just to talk about how my point, obviously, if you want to combat it, you can. If you want to agree with me, you also can. But a lot of Justin Fields and Zach Wilson aren't it. And I think a lot of the criticism that they're receiving is extremely unfair. Uh, It's tough, man, because... I'll start with with Fields. Um, it definitely comes down to coaching, and I, I, and it doesn't help that they changed how they played last year. Because yeah. when you saw Fields, you're like, oh, we have something here. But now people are talking about he can't throw it, coverage like reading coverages, and they have DJ Moore. They got a guy that he could throw it to. I'm, I'm really going to blame it on the coach for trying to force him to be a pocket passer. And that's something that you know he's not he's not great at doing. Yeah. And if we're not going to let him do what he does best, and that's run, then you're going to have some growing pains as what we're watching. If you're going to keep him in the pocket and tell him to make these reads, he's going to struggle. So I feel like you gotta have a balance. You gotta change up the play calling. I understand you want to take care of him, but he's known for running the ball. So allow him to do that. Right. Same thing goes for Lamar. Like, I, I when I see those like two players, I think of the same. Like they have that same talent because they both could throw it. Um, but they're known for running. Like Lamar's struggling because he's also they're trying to keep him in this pocket, where he's not running the ball like he used to. I get it, a lot of injuries, but, like, you're taken away from what he what he does. So it's hurting your offense. It's, hurt, it's hurting moving the ball forward. So I, I don't like what they're doing with him and how they're using him. And I get it, DJ Moore is a little upset, frustrated. But at the same time, I, I really question if he could really read a coverage. Like, I get the whole he's doing bad, we're barking on him. But my concern, and this is a real concern, because it happened to, uh, hey, one of the greats, um, Mahomes. Oh. And they were saying, like, when he was facing Tom Brady and going against Belichick, just switching up the coverages, making it hard for him, like, he struggled. Yeah. He struggled big time. Defensive And then guys. he had, a, hey, I got I to gotta get in. I got to do film. And I feel like that also comes with, obviously, you know, you putting yourself and going looking at film. Yeah. But, hey, offensive coordinator, let's let's sit down with this guy. Let's let's go over coverages. If you can't even know any of the coverages, good luck. Good luck. So I just feel like it is it is on him, but, too, like, dude, what are we doing? Yeah. This is his second year, and he's struggling. Like, he, yeah. Like, he's struggling. And like, he, you're supposed to get better. Like, how do you have a great year and then – you get DJ Moore, you're supposed to bounce back and make improvements, and you just – you don't even look like a National Football League quarterback at this point. And it's hard to say that because I, I like his game. I just haven't seen his game this year, this season, yeah, the yeah, past yeah, four yeah. weeks. Um, I think you made great points because I, I think I, I – not I think. I agree with you. Uh, Justin Fields and Zach Wilson, you do notice that – they might be having a little bit of trouble when it comes to picking up defenses. But I think where I'm coming in is this. You made the point about at least Justin Fields. You made the point about Justin Fields not playing to his potential or at least getting better. And I'm with you. He's not. He's not at all. There's, n- there's nothing defending that except for the fact that last year Justin Fields led the league, I think, in rushing quarterbacks, yes. right? Touchdowns mm-hmm. and I think rushing yards, right? If that is working for him and potentially the bread and butter for this team, why are you going away from it? Yeah. Like, just because you signed DJ Moore, we're just going to go away from RPOs and just throw in it downfield? Like, yeah. what's – right? Um, I, I find a balance. To me, I just think in both – I just think in both quarterback rooms, right, 
like, why hasn't nobody noticed, okay, these guys can't really read defense as well? Let's dumb it down. Let's dumb down the offense. Well, the thing is, on Zach Wilson, on Zach Wilson's side, the problem is that team was constructed for Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. That, that team was completely constructed from Aaron Rodgers. Now, now, literally, four plays into the game, that whole blueprint is out the window. Yeah. And now we have to, the Jets have to throw you out into the Wolves, into a team slash offense that was made for Aaron. Yeah. Not made for you, no. for Aaron. So I can just imagine yeah. how complex that, that yeah. book is because it was Aaron at the helm and not Zach. Yeah. So now you get Zach, right? And I'm not saying uh, what was uh, Sean Payton is correct, right? But we're about to enter what week five? Mm-hmm. What are we doing? What, what the offensive coach? Why haven't we somehow switched this to complement Zach Wilson? Correct. Like, what's going on? Yeah. You guys need to realize Aaron's not coming back. Yeah. It's either this or if somehow you find another quarterback. But let's be honest, the other quarterbacks out there they ain't doing it. Who who? You, I don't know who you're getting. Who are you going to sign? Car- Carson Wentz? No. Uh, um, even though I would like to see that, and, and it's mostly because of story. I'm not saying I'm doubting him, because, but you have been out of the league for a while. Yeah. You're going to sign Colin Kaepernick? Dude, you know, he's like, been out for... Yeah, he's been out for so long. Like, oh, Nathaniel, right? Nathaniel Hackett. Like, when are you going to start simplifying the offense for Zach? You make three plays, and out of each play, have three different options to run the play. Now you have nine plays in total. That should be good enough for someone like Zach Wilson to run. And just hope to God that the defense in front of you is not realizing that all you're really doing is running three plays and, 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 and also run the ball. You have Dalvin Cook, I, I get, you and know, the whole – And Brees Hall. You have Dalvin Cook and Brees Hall. I get that maybe they're just starting slow and Brees Hall had the injury. But – they're, it's better to run the ball between those two than give Zach Wilson 40 throws a game. Yeah. So, go back to Justin Fields. Same thing. Run, uh, led the league. Rushing quarterbacks. Rushing touchdowns. Well, maybe not touchdowns because I think Jalen Hurts maybe has something to say about that. But you run away from it. Like, what's with the coaching staff that, oh, we're not going to help our quarterbacks out. But because it's not working, we're also going to put all the blame on them. No. That makes zero sense to me, man. Yeah. Zero sense. And I'll give the Jets some some props because um, Robert and Zach, like as they should, because it is the two positions in football that should be taking the blame. After every game, they're like, oh, that's on me. Yeah. But Zach, I'm going to be honest with you, buddy. Even though maybe you don't really play that well, it shouldn't be on you because th- your team is not helping you in any way, shape, or form. And the fact that I heard news... Right, that the the Jets offense is mad that they keep ta- that no that Robert keeps uh, what do you call this backing up Zach? That's alarming. Wait, can you repeat? I heard I I read something or heard something that the Jets the rest of the Jets offense and I could be wrong. Maybe that was just cock sources and I'm just I'm reading something that isn't true. That the the rest of the Jets offense, not Zach Wilson, is mad at the at the head coach for continuing to back up Zach Wilson. I mean, what is he supposed to do? How you know how devastating? If I'm yeah. Zach Wilson, you know how devastating it is to come in to my my facility knowing that the rest of my office do- doesn't even care for yeah. me. What are we? This yeah. is why you guys are the Jets. Yeah. This is why. Like, are you even defending? Like, are is your offensive line even protecting you at this? Point? Oh, and, oh, another thing, another thing that we're and and I'm and this is gonna defend both Aaron Rodgers because obviously look what happened to Aaron Rodgers yeah. and Zach. You guys have one of the worst <laughs> offensive lines. Terrible. If not the worst. Terrible. So how how can Zach operate in an offense that when he every time he hikes the ball is four freaking flesh eating rushers coming at him? Yeah. No, bro, I think it's very unfair. You're not gonna put the blame on him. Right. I still think you had amazing points. I think you're still right. Yeah. But to put a hundred percent of the blame on these two quarterbacks is extremely unfair. Not from both teams, but a lot of those ESPN analysts that I've been hearing, oh, th- these guys are ass, this, that, and the third. You guys are, and some of you played football. Yeah, that's gross. You guys should understand that there's a lot of levels to this. Not just that these guys can't. Well, this is not me putting it on you. That these guys can't read defenses or can't read their offense or can't run their offense, bro. Zach Wilson doesn't even have an O line. 
Yeah, yeah Justin yeah. Fields ha- are doing plays that don't even compliment him. And I think that's the issue. Like, it's not. I'm not coming at Justin Fields for not like reading the defense, but it's hard when you're running plays that <laughs> normally won't be run <laughs> if he can run the ball. Yeah, for sure. So, well, I'm, I I don't want to discredit you because. You can still tell that maybe they can't read the, the defense. So I don't. I I still think you're right there. I th- I'm just saying there's a lot of other aspects to that outweighs the one con. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I still think. Um, oh yeah, you said Wilson. I still think see, he he needs a little bit more help. Dude, that offensive line is gross, bro. <laughs> Yo, like it's same thing with Daniel Jones. Like it's just like what are you gonna do? It doesn't be, matter how good you are. Back besides, there. listen in that offensive line. Besides dudes like Mahomes, Josh Allen, and Joe Burrow, and I'm only throwing Joe Burrow for this reason only. It's not that he's not mobile, but Joe Burrow, if he sees that the play is dead, he's just throwing it out. Yeah. He's just throwing it out. He's not he's, even going to deal with it. Let's get to the next play and move on. Without, it, besides those three guys, I can, I can guarantee – maybe Jalen Hurts, sorry. I can guarantee you no other quarterback – is going to be successful with that offensive line. Yeah, like I, I, we know firsthand that Joe Burrow can because that offensive line. Well, yeah, the Cincy offensive line is not that. <laughs> it's not that good either. But so, so for what Joe Burrow does on a on a Sunday night basis, kudos to him. I'm not. This might be a bold statement because I don't want to take anything away from golf. You put Zach on that Detroit Lions with that offensive line, we're having a different conversation. We might have a different. Let me say that we might have a different conversation. Um, I mean, like, do you think he plays up to par with with golf? No, 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 no. I'm saying he he'll play better. Oh, or I, I, or yeah, yeah, to yeah, the yeah. eyes of the outside world, it yeah. would look better. I I agree. There, yeah, no, no. I'm not saying because golf golf is being disrespectful. I, I think golf is very underrated. But yeah, yeah. I was about to say. I'm like, I I like him. No, no. I I, like I love golf. I, the whole trade. I guess it still worked out for L. A. because they ended up winning. Yeah. I, but that oh. trade didn't make sense because I think golf is him. Golf probably went through the same situation at LA where the offense wasn't really complimenting him. Yeah, now's what he, what they got going on. I I like it. Yeah, I like I like what they got there. Um, but I do I, I see what you mean. Like I I say the same thing about the freaking Giants. Like I'm like, we can't yeah, blame yeah, this yeah, all yeah, on Daniel yeah. Jones true, 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 true. when my boys being pressured. <laughs> Against the Cowboys, it was sixty percent of the time. That w- that was insane. That's who's who's name me a quarterback that's gonna be in there who's getting rushed sixty percent of the time is gonna be successful. And like, like it's not gonna happen. And the thing is, right? Teams like the Jets, the Giants, um, Cincy, who who else has a pretty bad offensive line? Uh, whatever. If it's happening off camera, then it's happening off camera. But I I. No one's blaming these guys, man. Yeah. No one's blaming these guys. They still get on the field. They're still collecting these multi-million dollar checks yeah. to to look like they don't even care. Like it literally looks like to me that you're playing freaking Ole and allowing the Bulls to just hit your quarterback. Yeah. And it's rough because like when you think of a football team, you automatically like go to the stars or the quarterback. And most of the time the quarterback is the star. Yeah. So to put the blame on it's be At least by contract bad. standards. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's another thing that's gross to me, right? You're going to give your quarterback the most amount of money out of all the players, but you won't protect them. Make it make but then sense. you have that same argument when it comes to the runner backs. Make it make sense. Make but, it make sense. But, I, you know, I, just, I think you I, – I really do think – breaking it down the way you did, I think you had amazing points. All I'm saying is – a lot of the criticism these two guys are having are very unfair with a lot of the other stuff that are not working around them I'm with that, you. that aren't under their control. I'm with you. Um, we are going to wrap up this episode, but we're, before we do that, I do want to talk about one thing because you mentioned a different player, right? And I know you said that there's multiple teams that want to sign this guy if you know, it gets to that point or trade for him. But recently, again, unless it was just wrong sources, but Devontae Adams is not very happy at what's going on in L.A., I mean, uh, yeah. Vegas, excuse me. Um, and I'm here to present to you, because you mentioned another high-profile receiver possibly uh, joining the defending champs because he might be unhappy. Yeah, but what if we, instead of Justin Jefferson joining the Chiefs, what if we see Devontae Adams joining the Chiefs? Yeah, no. That, that, that's game. That's, that's a check back, made. Back to back. Back to back. Back to back. They're, they might three-peat. <laughs> they might mess around in three P, which is scary if they get him. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, he's 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 top ten, maybe top five. He's he's him, and if they can somehow find a way to get him, and if in, in the era of Kelsey, yeah, bro. Yeah, good luck, bro. Good luck. You thought Tyreek and that defense Kelsey? is young as hell, so you allow them to grow together. And if you can keep Jones, hey, get mm-hmm. freaking Devontae Adams and you keep Jones. Jones is like, all right, we'll win again. Yeah, I'll I'll stay here and win again. You won another two times. Easy. Yeah, I know you mentioned off camera that there's a lot of other teams in the contention. There's about and, six teams. And I think those other teams do fit well with Adams as well. But ever since we made that bold take that Justin Jefferson yeah. might join the Chiefs, the first thing I thought about was like, wow, imagine Adams yeah, they to find the Chiefs. A way to get him, yeah. That'll, that'll be big for them. Because not only is that like it stops the bleeding, but – Hey, put you in a position now to yeah, yeah. still be a high caliber team for a couple more years, um, and I I'm looking for I'm I'm thinking of teams outside of the six that would really like compliment him, and it's hard to put a finger on 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 a team. Like, is there a team that you like? All right, if the Chiefs like don't get them, like where would be like my liking for Devontae Adams, like? I'm going to be very biased here. Yeah. I think it might not. Okay. It might not be a better option because you might be going through the same thing that you're going through right now in yeah. Vegas with the, with the Patriots. But for us, like me being a Patriots fan and what I'm seeing, I think what will benefit us is that deep threat. Yeah. And if he joins the New England Patriots along with what Bill Belichick is doing with the defense, Bill O'Brien is doing with the offense, you know, maybe Mac Jones can feel a little bit more confident because he has that blanket. That opens up a lot for us. Yeah. You know, we have uh, Kendrick Byrne, Juju, and the rookie Boot Boutte. I keep pronouncing your name incorrectly, and I'm sorry. Right? We have those guys. Those guys can maneuver. And the thing is, the crazy part, I'm not even naming the two players that are right now our best two players, and that's Mike Jacecki and Hunter Henry. Hunter, Hen- the two our two tight ends is basically our offense. Yeah. Let me not say basically because Zeke and um, Stevenson they're working their 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 ass off too. But now we have our two tight ends with our two RBs, our other supplemental wide right receivers, and then we have a deep threat with Adams. It just opens a lot for us. Yeah, he's definitely a deep threat, but hey, he he can run any route for sure. Any route. For sure. Not just a deep threat, but he, he does it all. Um and I think I like I I like what you're saying. I I think he would be he would be a great fit for you guys. But for him, because I know he said he wants to win now. Yeah. Would that be a win now for him in no. his eyes? No. Um, situation. For to answer that, I obviously the Chiefs is one. I know I'm hearing a lot of people say like I don't know how they're gonna manage it, but a lot of people are saying like the Dolphins, someone said uh Cleveland. Baltimore. I like Baltimore. Um, I, and the only reason I'm putting Baltimore, you know, OBJ get, just got hurt and all that fun stuff. They need a receiver too. And I yeah. think if you pair someone like Devontae Adams with Lamar, and I know there's questions with Lamar throwing and stuff like that. I get it. But yeah. Lamar is still Lamar. He won MVP two years ago. If, if, if we can get that Lamar back and then you add Devontae with the backfield that they have, yeah. It can make some noise. Yeah, defensively they're good. They, I mean, they got Mark Andrews. Um, oh yeah, I forgot about Mark. Zay Flowers um, is 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 starting to rise, but that's their only guy offensively. Yeah. Um, and when you add uh, Devonte Adams, um, that I think that'll get them over the hump. But it comes down to uh, to throwing. Like he's got to be able to throw the ball. Yeah. And we got to look. Derek uh, Carr was great with. Devontae Adams. And then you had um, A-Rod, who was also great with him. Yeah. You know what I mean? You had guys that could throw the ball deep, guys that can place the ball. And then you – like, he – I get it. Mentally, you're upset because you're losing. But but my boy, the past two games, has touchdowns and has had 80 to 100 yards a game. It's not like he's – he is hooping. So Jimmy Garoppolo is also putting the ball where it needs to be. And all three place the ball really well and a deep threat. Is that something that Lamar can do 
with Devontae Adams. That would be my question mark, but I, I do like that plug and play. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm with you. I know there's a lot of questions when it comes to that. At least, at least, let me say this, because I know he has an arm, but can you throw the deep ball accurately? I get that there's questions there with Lamar, yeah. but um, I, I think I might be answering the questions incorrectly. I might be answering as to which teams would benefit yeah. having Adams instead of what what teams would – Will benefit Adams to join. I... Yeah, because I feel like he. Why would he move if it's not a win now and what he needs? Correct. Um, but I I get what you're saying. Like Baltimore would benefit, the Patriots would benefit. Yeah, yeah. But at the end of the day, does he benefit because he wants to win? Correct, correct. Um, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. That's kind of what you're asking. I, you know, I. It's a tough one. There's, there's not. There's really not many teams that are out there that to, are on a win now and or don't have question marks. There's a lot of teams. Well, actually, marks. if we really get to it, it, it might just not just, but who fit in those two categories, it might be the Chiefs. Yeah. There's still a win now, and I don't think they have that much confidence in their wide receivers. Yeah, Sky saw, Moore is shaky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, Rice, it's, you know, he first year, he's he's doing well. We're not going to talk about Tony. <laughs> he's irrelevant. Like, right. you know, you're going to really depend on Travis. Travis is getting up there, but he's going to be him. Yeah. You know, uh, Pacheco's doing his thing. You have uh, McKinnon. You got, like, you got it. You got the pieces. You just need one. And I feel like Devontae Adams is that one. Or Justin Jefferson. I, I so I didn't know that he he's a restricted freaking free agent at the end of the year. So like, oh, so it can't really happen. It it won't be able to happen. It'll have to probably happen in a trade. In a trade. Yeah. Um. Well, unless the Chiefs make you know a good package for uh, Justin Jefferson and you can't get Devontae Adams, there's always the choice that I made I think two weeks ago, which was uh, Mike Evans. If the Chiefs somehow manage to get Mike Evans, that's also. A very, very yeah, yeah, dangerous yeah, yeah. team, you know? Yeah. I mean, they're dangerous already, but... Uh-huh, yep. But I feel like to keep them on, on, on their pedestal, to keep them as who people the, chief, see the, chiefs. the Chiefs, you yeah. know, you're going to need a, a Mike Evans, you're going to need a Devontae, you're going to need a Jay Jetta uh, to, to keep that, that rain flowing. Yeah. yeah, for sure. But that is definitely going to conclude this episode of the Biggie Smalls Podcast. Again, this is my co-host, Eli. I'm Ray. Make sure you guys like the video. If you enjoy the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And if you haven't, you guys are all putties. <laughs> um, and hit that notification bell so you never miss a banger. Once again, Eli and EJ, if you're watching this, our sincere condolences um, on your losses. But we got you guys. We got you guys. Make sure you guys comment for these two gentlemen um, as they're going through some tough times right now. But we'll catch you guys next time. We love y'all. Peace.